Alrighty, welcome back uh, to the last video on systems of equations. This one's all about those application type questions. Uh, problem solving is another word for that. Um, now, most of the time, you're not really told which method to use to solve the problem. So it'll give you a scenario, a bunch of numbers, all that sort of stuff, but it doesn't ever tell you how to actually solve it. Now, we learned in this unit there are four ways that you could do that, one of which uh, is using a graph. So if you create the system, you can graph the two lines. Uh, you could find out the point where they cross. That would be your solution. We also you learned uh, how to do things with the technology. So you could graph them on your calculator, provided you had such a tool to do that. Um, the other two methods were those algebraic methods of substitution and elimination. Now we're going to focus on those algebraic methods uh, in here, not necessarily uh, graphically, because some of the scenarios um, end up being a little challenging to graph. It's hard to make them exactly right. Uh, and the, using the right scales and things like that. Sometimes the answers end in decimals. It's not always a good method um, to get that uh, ideal perfect answer. Technology is also not great because not everybody will have access to one of those graphing calculators. So it makes that a little bit challenging as well. So we're gonna focus on the two algebraic methods, okay? Uh, so there's four problems in here, I believe. They're all, they are all quite different, but the methods to solve them are very much the same. So uh, the first one here says, Lisa recently won $10,000 and invested part of it in a GIC, uh, which earns interest. This is just a type of bank account, uh, which earns interest at a rate of 8% per annum, annum meaning year, like annual. Uh, and the rest was invested in a mutual fund, uh, again, just a different type of account, which earns interest at a rate of 12% per annum. At the end of one year, Lisa earns a total of $1,120 in interest from both investments. Now, that's not each one. That would be total. Okay, so how much did she invest at each rate? Now, again, like I've said in a previous video, um, the question usually in these for systems, um, the question that, you're, that you have to answer will usually tell you what your two variables are going to be. So we know we have two different accounts. Let's label them X and Y. Um, the question says, how much did she invest at each rate? So there's essentially what my X and Y are going to be. So the amount in the different accounts is going to be what X and Y are. So let's make X the amount invested at, let's say that one is 8%. And that means Y is the amount at 12% uh, is the other number. Okay, so there's my two, two accounts. X and Y are the amounts that are invested at the given rate. Um, so my first equation then could be um, adding those two amounts together should give me the amount of money I started with, my actual investment. So that means that for one equation, it could be the amount invested at 8% plus the amount invested at 12% in total. That should give me the amount of money I've invested, that $10,000. Okay, now the other equation has to do with all of the interest. That's where the other pieces of information came from. So I know it was 8% for one account, 12% for the other account, and now I earn 1120 in total. So whatever I put in that account, um, that 8% account, the amount of money, X, that earns money at a rate of 8%. So whatever was placed in there, if I multiply it by 0 0.08, that should give me the amount of interest that's in that account. Using the same logic, if I add to that 12% of whatever was in the Y account, um, that's going to give me, in total, if I add them, the amount of interest I've earned, 1, 1, 2, 0. Okay, so I've got two equations. Now, it makes no difference if we do this using substitution or elimination. At this point, the choice is yours unless stated otherwise. It doesn't tell us how to solve it in this question, so we're free to pick any method we want. Let's, I'm just going to choose to do substitution here. And I'm doing that because if I look at this first equation we've set up, it, um, there's no coefficients for X and Y, but if I try to make the same coefficients in both in order to do elimination, I'm gonna have to use some decimals. So I'm gonna avoid that here, and I'm gonna pick equation one, and I'm gonna solve for X in the first equation. Okay, so this is my beginnings of substitution. Pick one of those equations and solve for one of the variables. 
So that means x plus y is equal to 10,000, which means x is 10,000 minus y. So there's my expression. Now, if I found it from the first equation, I'm always going to place it into the other equation. So if I get it from the second equation, we're going to put it into the first. Always flip that around. Okay, I'll write my equation out first. So 0.08x plus 0.12y equals 1120. There's my equation, just like it says above. We're going to replace x with this expression, 10,000 minus y. So 0.08 we're going to actually have 10,000 minus y plus 0.12 y's equals that 1120. I've got to do a little bit of distributing inside that set of brackets. So 10,000 multiply by 0.08, 800 minus 0.08 y plus 0.12 y's equals 1120. Let's sim simplify and collect some like terms. Let's move the 800 to the other side by subtracting 800 from both. And I'm going to need to shrink this here in a sec. Okay. Now, let's put our y's together. I've got negative 0 0.08 and positive 0.12. So negative 0 0.08 plus 0 0.12 should be 0 0.04. So 0 0.04y's is now equal to 1120 minus that 800. That's 320. Okay. Last step in order to find y, divide by 0 0.04 on both sides. So y equals 8,000. So that means that uh, I believe her name is Lisa. Lisa has invested, of the 10000 Lisa has invested $8,000 at 12%. Okay, now that I know that, I, I know she started with $10,000 in total. We're going to take that value for y, plug it into the first equation, because that equation was x plus y equals 10000 That means x plus 8000 equals our 10,000, so x is equal to $2,000, okay? Therefore, Lisa invested $2,000 at 8% and $8,000 at 12%, okay? So by using substitution here, we were actually able to figure out what those two dollar amounts in those accounts would be. Now, it would be the same answer if I used elimination. It would be the same answer if I used uh, a graph, um, provided I had a method to draw them perfectly. If I rearranged both of those equations into slope-intercept form, that y equals mx plus b, you could graph them in your calculator as well, find the intersection point, um, and that would tell you the exact same thing that we found um, using those algebraic methods, okay? So we'll tell you, no matter what uh, method you use, it will tell you the same things. Okay, so let's, take, let's try the second one. Um, during lunch, the cafeteria sold a total of 160 muffins and individual yogurts. That's total again. The price of each muffin is $1.50. Each yogurt container is $2. The cafeteria collected $273.50 in total. Set up and solve a linear system to determine the number of each um, that was sold. So with a scenario that deals with things being sold, you usually have two pieces of information, the amount of physical objects in this scenario and the amount of money. So if I look at this based on the physical number of objects, there was 160 muffins and yogurts total that were sold. So not 160 muffins and 160 yogurts, because that wouldn't make sense. That would just straight up answer the question. Okay, so that 160 is the total of the muffins and the yogurts. We just don't know how many of each it is. It could be one muffin and 159 yogurts, vice versa, or somewhere in between. Now, based on that one statement, we have enough information to define our variables. So let's use M. I'm going to change the color. 
let's use M and Y. M is number of muffins. Y is number of yogurts. You could use X and Y if you want to and define them however you like. I'm just going to use M and Y because it makes sense. Now, my first equation, I'm going to deal with the physical number of items. So if I take the number of muffins and I add the number of yogurts, that should give us 160 items in total. The next piece of information we're going to use is the money. So if a muffin is $1.50, a yogurt is $2, and I've collected $273.50 in total, that must mean that if I take the amount for a muffin, and I multiply by how many muffins I have, that should give me the total amount of dollars it costs for all of the muffins. Same logic is true for the yogurt. So if a muffin is $1.50, that means 1.50 multiplied with the number of muffins plus $2 times the number of yogurts in total, that should give me how much money that the cafeteria made. And there's my system. I've taken all the pieces and put them together. Now we've got to come up with a way to solve it. Now, Last time we did substitution, here that doesn't look like a bad choice, but if I look at the y's, okay, in orange, my first equation has a coefficient of one, but in purple, I've got a coefficient of two. So really, in order to do elimination, I would have to take the first equation and double it to make those y coefficients the same. Okay, this is an easy one to make the same since I just have to change one equation. So let's do that this time. We're going to take the first equation and we're going to double it. You know, that'll change the first one into saying it's now 2m plus 2y equals 320. But the second equation hasn't changed. So 1.5m plus 2y's equals 273.50. Okay, so here's my system now. Now I can work with this. Okay, so let me just actually move this a little bit kind of separate it for us, shrink you, there we go, okay. Now I've got to figure out how to actually eliminate that y variable. Now since the coefficients are both two now, that's good. The signs are positive, so they're the same. The only way for this to work is to subtract the equation. So 2m minus 1.5m is 0.5m's. My y's have canceled, so now I need to subtract my constant, so 320 minus 273.5, and we see that it is 46.5. Last step, divide by 0 0.5, divide by 0 0.5. That means that I'm essentially doubling this. So 93 is what we get. Now, this should be, uh, this should jump out to you as being a good thing. Um, because my answer is actually a whole number, no cafeteria is going to sell you part of a muffin. They either sell you one or they don't. They're not going to sell you a decimal. So if you've gotten a decimal at this point, double check your work. Something is probably off. You might have missed a number somewhere, but we're okay. I've got a whole number. So now I know I've sold 93 muffins. I've got to figure out how many yogurts now. Now I can see my first equation says that I took some amount of muffins, some amount of yogurts, added them together, and I got 160. So let's take that value of m and let's plug it into the first equation. So that means that 93 plus y has to equal to 160, which means that y should equal 67. By doing that, by doing elimination here, it saved me a lot of steps. Like, if you really just compare the two, substitution looks like a bit more work. Elimination is a little bit easier, but there's a lot more understanding that goes into the pieces. It looks like less work, more understanding. Okay, so we can say now that therefore, there were 93 muffins and 67 yogurt souls. And there we go. A couple more here. Um, you have a coin collection now that consists of quarters and nickels, so two types of coins. In total, the collection is made up of 49 coins. The total value of the coins is $8.85. How many quarters? How many nickels? 
Um, very, very common type of question uh, that we see come up. Um, and again, it does deal with the physical amount and physical number of items along with money at the same time. So it is a nice way to blend those two things together. Now we can highlight some stuff again, that if I have both quarters and nickels, and in total, I have 49 coins. So let's define some variables first. So let's say Q for number of quarters. Now each quarter is worth 0 0.25 cents, so a quarter of a dollar. So four quarters make up that one loony. Now let's say that N is going to be the number of nickels. And a nickel is five cents, so in terms of dollars, that's 0 0.05 dollars. Five cents, but 0 0.05 dollars. And that's an important distinction to make here. Now if I go to write my first equation, if I take the number of quarters and I add to it the number of nickels, I should have 49 coins. Just forgetting about the money, physical number of items tells me I have to have 49. Now based in terms of money, the total value of the coins is $8.85. So my second equation has to deal with that piece of information. Now one quarter is worth $0.25. I'm given an amount in dollars. So I need to make sure I write everything in terms of dollars. So if I take the value of one quarter, 0 0.25 dollars, multiply by the number of quarters I have, add to it the value of a nickel again in dollars, 0 0.05, multiply it by N, the number of nickels, that will give me the total amount of dollars, 8.85. Okay, so there's my two equations, there's my system. Now again, you can choose substitution, you can choose elimination. It doesn't really make a difference. Maybe this time let's choose elimination. Since we did a substitution with decimals before, let's try to do elimination with decimals. Now it doesn't really matter which variable you pick to get rid of, either the Q or the N, it doesn't make a difference whatsoever. Um, let's, do, uh, let's do N this time. So we're gonna try to make the N coefficients the same, which means I have to take the first equation, and we need to multiply it, everything, by 0 0.05. Okay, so that's gonna change everything. So the first equation will become 0.05q plus 0.05n equals 49 times 0 0.05, 2.45. My second equation didn't change. So 0 0.25q plus 0.05n equals 8.85. Now we've got to do our actual eliminating, and we're going to look at right at those n's. So the variables are both n, the coefficients are both 0 0.05, the signs are both positive. Since they are the same, we are going to subtract one equation from the other. So 0 0.05 minus 0 0.25 negative 0 0.2 Qs, ends are gone, 2.45 minus 8.85, negative 6.4. I worry too much about the negatives. Uh, they will cancel out when we do our division. So let's divide by negative 0 0.2. That means that Q will equal, so divide by negative 0 0.2, 32. And again, it's helpful to analyze that answer. I got 32 for Q, and we said that Q had to be the number of quarters. I cannot have a decimal answer here because I can't have part of a quarter. Okay, it's got to be a whole number, which it is, which is a good thing. So I know there's 32 quarters. I also know in total I have 49 coins. So we're going to do a little bit of a substitution. So Q can go into our first equation now which says that 32 plus the number of nickels should be equal to 49, which means that N equals 49 minus 32, 17. Okay, so by doing that, now we know that, so therefore, there are 32 quarters. Oops. Oh, what's going on? There are... 32 quarters 
amps, that means there are 17 nickels. Okay, and there's your solution. Okay, so you can see even by doing elimination with the decimals, the process is really no different. The only thing that changes is that you have to worry about doing uh, arithmetic with decimals instead. Um, but honestly, it's the same, the exact same process how we would have done elimination for something that didn't necessarily have a lot of decimals. Okay, it's the same, no different. Let's do one more. Uh, last one here. Uh, Colin and Sam, I think that's, yeah, that is the last one. Colin and Sam are off to the movies with some friends. They don't drive, so they have to take the bus. Colin buys five admission tickets uh, and three bus tickets and pays $65. Sam buys two admissions and one bus ticket, and he pays $25. We're asked to determine the price of each ticket. And again, you can look at that question where this really tells us what we have to do, and this basically defines what our variable is going to be. Um, I need the price of each ticket, which means I don't know two things. I don't know how much an admission is, and I don't know how much a bus ticket is. Those are our two things. So let's say that A is an admission ticket, and that'll be price, and B is a bus ticket price. Okay, now we can go make some equations. So on the one hand, uh, there, well, there's one and two. Let's do a little bit of highlighting first. So let's take a look at Colin situations first. So Colin buys five admissions and three bus tickets. Now in total, that cost Colin $65. It's pretty important, it's a lot of money. So let's go make an equation. I know that we defined A as the admission ticket price. If there's five admission tickets, that means it's A plus A plus A plus A plus A, I think that's five. Either way, you could just do five multiplied with the number of tickets that he bought. So as long as I know the price of one, I could find the price of five of them. Three bus tickets, that's the same logic, B plus B plus B. So if I add to this three times the price of one ticket in total, that should give me $65. There's one of my equations. If I do this again uh, for Sam, two admissions tickets, oops, uh, two admissions tickets and one bus ticket that costs $25. So two admission tickets plus one bus ticket equals $25. And I've got my system. Now it's just up to us to figure out the best way to solve. Now, looking at them, none of the coefficients on those variables are the same, but I could make them the same. Um, I could do substitution as well. Now, I feel like we've done a lot of elimination here. We did two already. Uh, let's do a substitution example then. So we're going to look at equation two. And the reason why I'm choosing that one, um, it's the one that has a variable that doesn't have a coefficient. Okay, That's going to make our life a whole lot easier when we go to solve uh, because I won't have to worry about introducing a fraction. So let's go solve equation two for b. Now, that's not to say this is the only way you can do substitution. Um, you could absolutely solve for any one of those variables that you want. This is just the path of least resistance, okay, the one that has the least amount of work. So that second equation, just as a reminder, was 2a plus b equals 25. If we're going to solve for b, we're going to subtract two a's from both sides. So b equals to 25 minus 2a. You can write negative 2a plus 25 if you want makes no difference. Um, this I find to be a little bit easier to work with because sometimes if you write it the other way, you forget about the negative sign. This is easy to see, uh, you know, it won't go anywhere. It's sandwiched right in the middle. So there's what B is. Now, since I got that from number two, we need to put it into number one. So B is gonna go into the first equation. That first equation again was 5A plus 3B equals 65. So 5A plus 3B B was now 25 minus 2A equals to 65. So let's do a little bit of distributing and a little bit of collecting like terms. So 5A, um, 25 times 3 is 75 minus 6As equals to 65. Now, if I keep my As on the left side, I've got a positive 5A, a negative 6A, so that's going to leave me with negative A equals. 
If I subtract 75 from the left side, I need to subtract 75 from the right hand side as well. So that should leave me with negative 10. Now let's just double check because I always get paranoid about my mental math. Negative 10. Now, if I divide both by negative 1, that will tell me that A should be positive 10. All right. So now that I know that, this tells me that the price uh, for admissions to the movies, the movie ticket was $10. That's what this really tells me. Now I've got to use that information to figure out how much the bus ticket costs. So we're going to plug that into any one of these two equations. Uh, I'm going to pick the second one just because it looks a little bit easier. So we're now going to take A, put it into number 2. And again, number 2 was 2A plus B equals 25. So A was 10. Okay, that's what we just found. A was 10. Close that. Plus B equals 25. So 2 times 10 is going to give us 20. So we're going to subtract 20 from both sides. Those cancel. We're left with just B is equal to 25 minus 20. That gives us 5. There we go. So now I know that the movie ticket was 10, and we know that the bus ticket was 5. We found everything we needed to. So therefore, a movie ticket is $10, and a bus ticket costs $5. So there's your solution. And again, the method chosen makes no difference at all. Pick the one that's easiest for you, um, unless stated otherwise. So if you are asked to use a specific method, um, you should be using that method. Because if you don't, it's really like you're not answering the question. Okay, so make sure you read it carefully. And if it doesn't say, pick the method you like most. Uh, I hope uh, that these videos are helping. Um, and that's really the end of uh, systems of equations. So um, take care. And again, if you need some help, uh, please, please ask your teachers. Uh, send me an email as well. Uh, and we'll be more than happy to help you out. Okay, we'll see you later.